So um, cannot say thank you enough for all of our presenters today um, and the sessions that we've had. Of course, Stephanie Alana here in our final uh, present presentation of the day. Um, so many, many thanks to all of you. I um, basically am going to uh, uh, move directly into this uh, kind of closing, a few closing thoughts before passing the baton over to uh, our Tourism Naturally Conference Coordinator, Emily LeBlanc, uh, who's going to be describing our uh, networking session. Um, so just a few words reflecting on what we've heard today and what we can expect for day two of the conference tomorrow. Uh, so in our sessions today, I think a lot of what the speakers shared could be linked in some way to uh, two concepts, um, the concept of risk, and the concept of response. Uh, I think these concepts are really tied to both vulnerability and resilience. And also, of course, to this overarching theme of the Tourism Naturally Conference here, our focus on protected areas, tourism, and a changing world. Uh, so I've just jotted down a few notes uh, by way of a summary, right? Of some just key takeaways, some things that I um, was really drawn to from some of the presentations. So in, in his opening talk, for example, Stan Rowland of uh, the Blue Climate Initiative said something along the lines of, never before in human history have global systems been at the level of risk that they are today. Um, many of uh, the other presenters kind of throughout the day also highlighted numerous conservation and tourism related concerns around you know, things that we're all aware of and that, that bring us, uh, at least I know from talking with many of our students here at Colorado State University, some degree of dismay, things like pollution and land and marine ecosystem degradation, um, climate change, of course, issues, all things related to that, over tourism, social and racial inequities, uh, and then one that was highlighted in some uh, degree of detail in our second presentation, um, lack of animal rights and welfare, which is a, a big topic, of course. On the other hand, uh, many speakers, our speakers throughout the day shared many examples of what I could call or what we might call silver linings. Uh, I would say innovations and even uh, new mindsets in tourism. Uh, and conservation that represent, let's call it, some level of progress in our response to, to these risks and challenges that, that have been discussed and that, that we're aware of. Right? Uh, so, for example, I know, uh, you know, one thing that really stood out for me was Kelly Bricker and, and uh, Mega uh, Bruno from Arizona State University, and also Stan Rowland in, in that first presentation. They, they highlighted this concept of transformational change um, and gave some, some real examples of transformational change over just uh, uh, what we might call incremental change to address areas of concern. So, so Mega, for example, talked about a, a personal story of tra the transformational power tied to just spending time in nature. And in her case, she was um, hanging out with gorillas in Rwanda um, Stan, of course, mentioned this, uh, among many other examples, a sea-based air conditioning system on their atoll in French Polynesia that is reducing literally hundreds of thousands of tons of greenhouse emissions every year. And that's something that, you know, university researchers are looking at. Uh, countries are considering adopting that concept or that system, as well as other things that they're doing there. Um, so some really positive examples of transformation um, throughout the day that we've heard. Uh, another thing that, that really stood out um, was this idea uh, presented by David Bugs of Texas Parks and Wildlife, um, who he's the chief diversity and inclusion officer there. But he talked about compared with white students, as I just mentioned with Stephanie and Alana, there's uh, currently considerably faster growth in the number of female and minority students earning bachelor's degrees in natural resources. Um, and he talked about examples of programs um, that are helping marginalized groups 
uh, kind of like what we just heard about, right, with uh, Alon and Stephanie and with other uh, presenters today, basically helping these groups or kind of working with them um, so that they feel like they belong in the outdoors, that sense of belonging, um, and feeling like they're a part of something that they have a say in developing, right? Um, and so those are just some examples, and there are many, many others given throughout the day of uh, things type of innovations in visitation and, and uh, rural areas, destination um, kind of uh, reorientations and rejuvenation uh, for many different individuals today. Positive responses, right, to, to many of the tourism related risks and challenges that we're seeing in the world and in our, our various locales. Uh, so I just want to emphasize, right, uh, all of you uh, watching these sessions and participating in the conference will have access to these presentations in the coming months. So please consider going back and reviewing those, um, anything that you might have missed or would want to, to look at again. Really quickly, for our day two sessions tomorrow, I just want to touch on a few things. We're going to be really focusing on uh, students. So tomorrow's kind of a student-focused day, we could say. Um, while continuing this discussion of, uh, of risks and our responses to them. So I'll be kicking things off at uh, 8.30 in the morning, Mountain Standard Time. We'll be uh, then hearing from Andy Wirth, uh, president of Ridgeline Executive Group from uh, the Colorado-based organization, Trees Water People. Uh, really great organization, looking forward to that. Uh, we'll be hearing from Paloma Zapata in Barcelona. She's the CEO of Sustainable Travel International, and she'll be talking about some of the work that they're doing. Uh, we'll also be hearing from a handful of graduate students who will be describing their respective research and programs at universities in Italy, China, and the U.S. And then we'll be closing out tomorrow uh, hearing from a panel of two board members who are helping oversee uh, an innovative master's degree program here at CSU uh, called the Master of Tourism Management Program. So uh, that's what we can expect for tomorrow. Uh, a lot of uh, new connections and, and uh, conversations around these very important topics. I look forward to seeing you all and I'm gonna stop talking and, uh, and I'm